I'm Vanessa Rock, the girl on a bike, and I'm here with two pretty special Harley Davidsons. So we've got the Sport Glide and the Street Glide Special, and I'm gonna be taking them on a road trip through France with my husband, so let's get loaded. First thing is getting packed up and loaded, and I don't know if I'm like everybody else or if you're like me, but I always get in some mad panic at the end where time's run out and I'm trying to get on the bike, so there's stuff everywhere. I've got two big panniers loaded up, a little bit of a top box. I'm on the special and husband's gonna start on the sport glide. Both got panniers. I will introduce you to my husband, Rocky Monster, a little bit later on, but for now, we're running really late to catch off ferry, so let's hit the road. <laughs> break on the way to the ferry. I've just learned the hard way why you don't go for pee in the middle of stinging nettles. But <laughs> we're meant to post these two cards on the way out of village. It just shows how wind protected you are on one of these bikes because it's done 100 miles and they're still there. How's Rocky Boys doing? That's the husband. Woo! After all the mad panic and the chaos leaving the house, we've actually made it down to the ferry in Portsmouth with half an hour to spare. So Rocky Monster just gone into a kebab shop and we're getting some dinner instead of having to have the rubbish ferry food. Uh, but I thought I'd probably give you a bit of a heads up of what this video is going to entail. So we have the Sport Glide and the Street Glide Special. They're two similar but very different bikes and I'm gonna talk you through what some of the key elements of each of these two options from Harley Davidson are gonna deliver, what they might be best suited for, to help you maybe decide whether one of these two models is going to be for you. Uh, we'll start getting into that details tomorrow, but my initial reaction is pretty awesome because these speakers, which are in here, I kind of thought they were gonna be a bit of a gimmick, a bit of fun, and uh, the crazy thing is, you can be riding along fast, I'm not gonna tell you what speed, and you can still hear the music. They are really good speakers. So I'm gonna be having a boogie all the way down to the south of France. So uh, we'll uh, keep going, we've gotta get a ferry to catch, and uh, the letters are still on the back of the bike. So I better sort those out before we get on the ferry too. Portsmouth and not have cheesy chips from the bad dude down in Guildhall. <clears throat> I don't see any cheese and we basically we didn't want to let our chips go cold so I've got fork too and we're eating our chips waiting to be loaded. on a ferry or a train is transport mode is super easy on a Harley Davidson so she's ready to go she's not going to go off if it starts rocking we're going to go get in our cabin and go to bed because we're not going to arrive in France be careful little guys <laughs> that's a big ship this is Boaty Book Boatface. <laughs> it's not, it's actually Wave Night, but. Ever wondered what a romantic dinner for the Rucks looks like? Have 
woken up in France, Bram, like magic. I actually had a dream sleeping where the boat didn't actually go anywhere and they woke us up in the morning and said, sorry, still in England, but thankfully we are actually in France. We've got coffee and a croissant because you've got to do that, right? Uh, we've got quite a hefty ride ahead of us today, haven't we? What do you reckon it is? We're going to have to Google map it, but I think we're looking at probably about seven or eight hours road time and that's going to be the very ultimate test to put the touring of the sport glide and the street glide special to the test to have their comfort so stay tuned for updates miles in we are absolutely cruising along I'm not going to start telling you about the bike yet because in order for me to have an opinion I've got to do some miles I've taken the sport glide on a trip previously around the Alps and got some pretty amazing riding probably about 2,000 miles on it so I feel comfortable talking about that one but the beast of a street glide got to get a little bit more bum on the saddle and then we'll start looking at uh, some of the key features of the We're on our second refuel of the day. Uh, the street glide is getting about 250 range and the sport glide is getting about 180, 190, which is pretty ace because actually it's quite nice to get off and have a little bit of stretch of legs and yeah, you can tell by the distance um, of how many flies we have taken out. I have none on my face because my fairing is so good. Uh, Rocky Monster, how's yours? <laughs> His bearing isn't as big, so he has more flies. <laughs> right, I've realised that me telling you what my bike is saying for its range is as pointless as you reading it in a online stats pile. So my bike is saying 265, the sport guide is saying 225. What we've just done, filled it up, we're going to reset our mileage and we'll tell you what our actual range is for this kind of touring terrain next time we fill up and that'll be far more accurate than just the stats that Harley pump out. made it to the wedding destination. It is swelteringly hot. That is a comfortable cruiser. That I can say we've got an amazing lakeside teepee. It's time to get into the swimming costume and get up into the swimming pool. Wow, it is so hot in here. We have had the most incredible time at the wedding. You can see by my face that it's been a bit of a three day party. And uh, ooh, something big just moved in the lake. We are going to be having our last breakfast now and then saying our goodbyes. Um, I'm walking a bit funny because I'm on a uh, wooden plank 
Um, yeah, and then it's nearly time to get back on the Harleys and ride for a couple of days on the way scenically back to England. For me, riding a motorcycle, there's got to be an element of credibility for me of to stand here and say to you what I like and dislike about a motorbike. And so that means hours with my butt in the seat. I've done around 2,000 miles on the Sport Glide and I've now done about 500 miles on the Street Glide Special, which means I feel like I can have a little bit of opinion on what these two bikes are like. Now, these are two brother motorcycles I want to say from Harley Davidson they have both got some advantages and some disadvantages so I want to talk through some of the things that I love about those bikes and maybe help you decide which one might be right for you and why because there is a bit of a price difference as well but price isn't always the most important factor it's about the features that are going to suit your lifestyle and the sort of riding you want to do the most so going straight in on the price you're looking at around 17,000 base entry for the sport glide and then you're looking at 26,000 starting price for the street glide special so there is a bit of a jump but there's a reason so let's look at some of the features on this one first now this really is a bike to rack up some miles on. It is incredibly comfortable. What I'm not gonna do right now is talk you through the spec sheets of these bikes because you can read that. I'm gonna give you a bit of my experience on this bike. This is really comfortable. It's got quite a low seat height, which enables you to have confidence given it is 375 kilo bike plus whatever you're putting in these panniers. It's got huge luggage as standard, which enables you to take quite a decent volume. I have chosen to put a little extra bag on the top just to have my camera equipment handy. But this is of course a pinion seat with a backrest, which means actually you can go two up and have a little bit more versatility. But where this bike really comes to life is the technology and the, I wanna say infrastructure, I don't know if that's the right word, but the advanced stuff that's going on in front of you. First of all, the size of this means that you're incredibly well protected. You don't feel any wind on your body, as proven by the bugs on my helmet versus my husband's helmet on the Sport Glide. We've got a touch screen going on in here. The speakers on this bike blow my mind. They're up here. I honestly thought speakers on a motorbike, sorry Harley Davidson, I thought it was a bit of a gimmick. You can hear those speakers going slightly above the speed limit. Obviously I don't like to speed and I like to follow the rules, but you can hear them clearly, even with my custom fit guard molded earbuds in, you can hear your music riding along, which is very cool. You rock up somewhere, you got your tunes blaring. It's like the party's coming. There's full navigation system integrated in there. It's very user friendly, I have to say. I'm not the best with these kind of systems, but I got to grips with it very quickly. I've put my quad lock mount on the bars. It has a USB port in here. The only thing I haven't figured out is how to have your USB wire out, but with your glove box closed, I don't know whether I'm just missing a trick or whether that's actually a little bit of a slight design flaw on where your, your cabling goes. Got very clear navigation so you can see what your volts are doing. I think the volts is a really cool one because if you've got your bike parked up, listening to your music, you can very easily monitor what your battery's doing. This is a big touring bike and with that you get some of the advanced Harley Davidson technology that is going to help keep you safe out on the road. So you've got hill start, you've got advanced linked braking so you give it a pull on the front brake it's going to intelligently apply the rear you've got all kinds of traction and braking support control even into cornering and stuff again i'm not going to list the spec sheet you can look that up very easily but i think the key thing is this is a very big bike it's got a lot of capability a lot of power a lot of weight and harley have put in a lot of technology systems to keep you safe while out riding on it when you're going to be doing some colder riding, you do have heated grips. There is also a little heating system under the seat here for hot and cold air. Very random, very cool feature. But I think the main thing for this bike is that it's made to enable you to do some serious distance with a lot of comfort, with all of the technology that you kind of need already in on the bike. You don't need to be bolting on extra navigation systems and things like that, and loads of luggage space. I was actually quite impressed how much you can fit in these. And with the size of this pillion seat, and the fact that it's got a sissy bar, you could very easily put a slightly bigger sissy bar and put one of the big rear Harley Davidson bags on the back to enable you to probably give yourself an extra 30% 
luggage weight. You're looking at 93 horsepower. It's obviously a big bike, but with the energy of the torque that Harley-Davidson V-Twin delivers, there is a lot of liveliness in that throttle, despite being on such a solid steed. I kind of feel like this is an ox on the road. And I don't mean an ox in that it's really solid and you can't corner and it's, you know, it's just big, solid, trusting, it's holding you well, it grips the road, you can bend it around, you can get around corners. I did scrape my uh, pegs on some of the twisties yesterday. That's all part of the adventure. Now this really is for the distance and the miles, but if you're back home wanting to do your commute and go to some bike meets, maybe filter in traffic, it's quite a big bike and that's where I think the Sport Glide has some pretty epic features. Now the Sport Glide, looking at 10k less, it is a Milwaukee 7 versus the Milwaukee 14, so you've got a slightly smaller engine and you're looking at 82 horsepower, but you're also looking at 304 kilo bike, so it's a lot smaller. The seat height is lower, it's also narrower, so the whole confidence of being on this bike is going to really help someone that's maybe on the smaller side or maybe wanting to try and build their confidence stepping up to a bigger bike, because this is still a big bike. That's a 107 engine so that's that translates to about 1745 ish cc comes with luggage as standard it has a removable sissy bar on the back which i have strapped one of harley davidson's pan this is actually my pannier from pan america um, but i've strapped that on the back for some extra luggage and it's got a fairing. So this is set up right now for touring for doing miles. And as I said, I've done about 2000 miles on this bike through some of the best roads in the Alps and the Dolomites. You can seriously lean it over. I came home and this foot peg was on diagonal. And that's not saying it can't corner, that's saying how easily you can lay it down and corner in its very agile machine. But where this bike really comes alive is the diversity in its application. This fairing comes off in about 30 seconds. Each of these panniers are very, very quickly removable and also the sissy bar. You remove those three things and suddenly you have a bike that is way more at home at your local bike meet, far more agile in traffic or commuting. And so this bike gives you kind of the best of being able to go on a big tour, but also live with at home a little bit more easy for the more everyday riding. So let's show you taking that stuff off. I've got my big bag on the back, so I might not take the sissy bar off, but let's take the fairing and the panniers off just to show you how quick and easy it is. Remove the gloves that are wedged in. Um, I, uh, so clip, clip. I've released it. Oh, I just had to pull. There you go. It's straight off. I mean, that is how easy it comes off. And then we go to a pannier. Hopefully, my husband's boxes aren't going to fall out on me. There's a little bit of a button inside that you pull and twist. That releases it and they come off. And obviously I'm not giving you the proper look right now because I am about to get on the bike and ride home once I've changed clothes. But you can see suddenly you've got a considerably sportier looking bike. The fact that those panniers come off so easily too means if you're popping into a hotel, bag straight off and you can carry them in. And they're actually quite easy to carry. I didn't do it up, but if you do it up, you can just, carry that in really really easily and on this big bike that pannier removal system isn't quite the same obviously you've got more pannier space and you're going to need to actually use some little luggage bags on the inside so I have little bags that I can just grab and take in it's all about compromise and trying to work out what is going to be the most important features for you and the sort of riding that you're wanting to do, the sort of adventures, the everyday, what's most important, where your budget point sits. But I think these two bikes are a really awesome option from Harley Davidson. They've obviously got that beautiful V-twin engine. There's a bit of a reputation for Harley Davidson's vibrating. Get all of that out of your brain. Modern Harley Davidsons have just the right amount of vibration to give them that soul and character, but no vibration that is going to fatigue you. So the final thing I think is worth thinking about is your actual riding position. So I'm gonna swing on onto this bike. I'm not in the right clothing for this, but it's very hot in, in the south of France. 
And this is a very comfortable seated position. I would describe this bike as actually more comfortable than being in a car. You've obviously got your pillion pegs. You can, of course, get long distance cruising pegs to go up there if you're wanting to really thrash out some motorway miles. But it's a low seat. And when you come over to this one, you're going even lower. And still a lovely open cruising riding position. Now, for my body, they feel good they do feel slightly different. So my tip to you is to get yourself to a showroom or somewhere where you can actually get your bum on the seat, take them for a test ride, think about the features that you're after and work out whether they're the right option for you. But I think they are pretty sexy beasts. It's time for me to get kidded back up. Hubby and I are gonna hit the road. We're probably gonna swap bikes a little bit and I, I wanna have a play on this one again. We're gonna head back up to the ferry and home to the UK. I'll give you some more thoughts on the journey home, including what are realistic ranges that we get. Uh, I'm getting eaten, so let's ride. but it got really cold for the last half an hour. I'm very grateful for heated grips and a heated seat. Genius on a motorbike. Um, we stop now and I've just put like all my layers on. The ferry's here. When you ride all the way across Europe and then you get back home to Wales and you get this 920 miles down Wales. What an incredible road trip. This thing has totally converted me to baggers. I'm Vanessa Rutlick on a bike. Let me know what you think in the comments. Which one of these two bikes do you think you fancy the most? And uh, make sure you tip the bell so you get notifications. I'll see you next video. I'm gonna sit and enjoy the sunset.